Thank you very much, Sprankton, for the $15 donation. Man, I could go for a bowl of cereal right about now. And with that, let us go to Chess Quest, the last game in our Doom Block, being run by Peaches. Oh, am I on? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Peaches, uh, and this is going to be Chess Quest. Before we start, though, I did promise during the interview that we would have a pretty good video uh, to begin with. This came with the game. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let it speak for itself, and we'll learn a little bit more about the world of checks. of cereal life on other planets when we discovered that they actually contain eggs to an evil cereal-eating creature from another dimension. We call them Flemoids. Flemoid eggs are exposed to nutritional substances. The eggs hatch. Preposterous! We have a nutritional development center in the caverns of Bazoic. They're growing fruit and vegetables, and they haven't had any trouble. General, two days ago we lost contact with Bazoik. We can only assume the Flemoids have taken over. To make matters worse, we have found that conventional weapons seem to have no effect on Flemoids. We need a volunteer to fly to the cabins of Bazoik and attempt a rescue of our citizens there. That's ridiculous! What soldier would be fool enough to enter a cavern full of unstoppable flamoids from another dimension? By recalibrating the phase frequency of our soldiers to match that of our transporters, we can send the flamoids back to their own dimension. We need a volunteer. I'm from Check Squadron, and I volunteer. <laughs> All right, who's amped up after that? Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that's Check's Quest, and we're going to be doing a little bit different category than, than the Doom that you've been seeing so far, uh, which is we were doing UV Speed. We're going to be doing uh, UV Max or Extreme Ooze Max. Uh, so instead of uh, just running through the levels, we're going to be uh, not killing all the enemies like in Doom. We're actually going to be zorching them and returning them home <laughs> to their home dimension. So with that, I think we're going to get started. So three, two, one, go. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, this this is Chex Quest, and um, oh, actually, I I have one one setting that I forgot. You can keep the timer going. This is my bad. Uh, okay, okay. So, this is Chex Quest. This is a Doom Total Conversion mod. Uh, total Conversion meaning that um, uh, Digital Cafe, the, the dev studio that created this, um, changed all of the assets from the original Doom engine. And so, uh, they, they created new sprites, new art, new sound, new music, uh, and, and they did all of that to make this new game that you see in front of you. And you could get this game in the stores. Uh, not the video game stores, but the grocery stores. You could go and get a, a box of Czech cereal and, and get the CD out of it and play it. And this was back in 1996 when this came out, and it was very, very, very successful uh, and very popular. Um, oops. Uh, I said I was going to zorch all of them, but one of them scurried away. Uh, there you are. Okay. Uh, so, 
Uh, that means that we have to Zorch every single Flamoid, so not, not one of them can escape. And I changed my HUD a little bit so that you can see uh, on the bottom left uh, how many kills and how many secrets <laughs> that I have. So that was the end of, of level one. Can't let them escape. Uh, and so yeah, so this is back in 96, and uh, it, it like quadrupled sales for checks during the couple of weeks that it was running. And, uh, and I had this as a kid, I loved playing it. And uh, there's actually kind of a story about uh, me playing it as a kid. So I, I went to like a kind of a summer school, uh, like summer camp thing. Uh, and uh, I, I made a friend there by just asking people, you know, what kind of video games do you play? And it turned out that two of us had uh, eaten Czech cereal and gotten this CD out of it. And we both played Czechs. And he told me about how in this level, the second level, um, there was a really, really big secret um, where you could go up an elevator and jump off it halfway. And there was this secret hallway that had like pictures of the developers and uh, it would give you a gun that would kill anything in one hit. And it was, uh, as he called it, uh, the last device. And he pointed one finger up in the air to denote how powerful it was. And I thought he was full of it, because it, it kind of sounds like a ridiculous, you know, like, uh, push the truck in Pokemon to get Mew story. But it turns out it's real. We're going to get it. It's in here. And it's so secret that the game does not count this as a secret. So there we have the last device. And uh, we're just going to see just how powerful it really is. So up here, there's a whole bunch of Flamoids waiting for us. Bam. Uh, so uh, that um, that used to not be in the speedrun. So for a little bit of kind of like speed history, um, the first run of this game that was up on speedrun.com uh, was by, is it Craft Lab? Yeah, it's Craft Lab. OK, yeah. And he had, I think it was a 10 10.09. 1009. OK. And he used the last device. Um, but then a second runner came along. Uh, Via this. Via this, thank you. Uh, and um, he, he foregoed uh, the, the last device. And it, it takes about 12 seconds to get. Uh, so that made his run faster. But it turns out that if you have really, really good usage of the last device, um, it saves like a second here, a second there. And it turns out that over the course of the whole run, it saves about 15 seconds. So I originally uh, just wanted to implement it just to tell the story about the kid from my childhood who told me about the last device. Uh, but I ended up making the speed run faster, too. So uh, thank you, uh, random kid from my childhood, for that. So there's going to be a lot of little shots like this uh, that, you know, these enemies only take like one or two shots to kill anyways. So it's not like we need this to clear these rooms. Uh, but it's just a little bit faster, and we use it often enough that it's worth doing. And uh, there's actually like a whole bunch of little uh, optimizations that this, uh, that this run has seen. Uh, one of them is at the start of this level. Uh, for example, like, there's six Flamoids here that we would normally return, and I would normally open that door afterwards to reveal a secret, but you, we can just open it halfway and, you know, cut the cycle and run out. So a lot of really little things like that. Um, additionally, oop, this guy didn't get aggroed out. And you've got a weird situation which is going to come up here because yes. there was a Flemoid who goofed up the invasion coordinates, so Peaches isn't shooting here for nothing. He's taking out a Flemoid. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a Flemoid who, like, spawns in the void behind the wall, and if I get unlucky, he'll walk away, and I won't be able to shoot him. So if my kill counter or Zorch uh, return counter didn't go from 14 to 15 there, then uh, I probably would have had to restart the level. So um, having said that, though, the rest of this level is, like, a pretty straightforward kind of run-and-gun situation, so this is a good time for a couple donations. Thank you very much, Joskul, for the $100 donation. Peaches, you're definitely one of my favorite runners. Good luck on your quest 60 chest quest run. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Maddie B, for your $15 donation. Looking forward to the fastest part of a well-balanced breakfast. Thank you very much, Jackifer, for the $10 donation. Shouts to Butters, Peaches, and Forever Good Boy Reggie. Thank you. We can actually go to the end of this level if, if there's some more waiting. Sure. Thank you very much, Flood Killer, for the $50 donation. I'm from Chex Squadron, and I volunteer. Zorch those Flemoids, Peaches. Thank you very much, Arctic Reverest, for the $10 donation. Good luck, Peaches. If the run is half as entertaining as your practice, one, as your practice was, this is bound to be an event favorite. It was especially great to learn that this game was serialized into a few sequels. Thank you very much, Jake, for the $25 donation. So glad I get to see Chex Quest at, eight, at a AGDQ. It was one of my favorite games growing up. I'll donate again if the runner kills an enemy with a spork. Put this donation to Cuphead. Right. Duly noted. You may be happy about that later. <laughs> Thank you very much, Fernando, for the $15 donation. So excited that Chex Quest is being played. Thank you, Peaches. It's the best prize I've ever taken out of a cereal box. 
Fun game, stands the test of time, unlike AOL version 3.0. And it taught me a new word I'd never heard before. Arboretum. Arboretum. This game does it all. Yeah, that's, so that's where we are right now. This is the, the Arboretum. And uh, at, as this elevator goes up, I'm going to fire some warning shots up into the air. And, and every single phlemoid within earshot is going to panic and scatter. And oh, he opened that door for me. So that's, that's like the ideal situation right there. Um, as soon as the enemies get aggro, they all kind of wake up from their, from their slumber and start doing stuff. And sometimes they'll clump together and make it easier to shoot them. Uh, sometimes they will open doors for you. But also sometimes they'll kind of scatter so far that they're kind of hard to shoot like this. Uh, sometimes they'll hide behind indestructible trees. You never really know, but usually it's worth it, so I like to go for it. Pretty oh, go ahead. We get some great insight on this level on the native flora and fauna on uh, Bazoik, and that's all thanks to Charles Jacoby, one of the nine main devs who worked on pretty much all of the art assets for Chex Quest. And I would define him as the MVP of the project because he really made it come alive. The levels are... Nothing too crazy to write about, a bit simplistic, but love all the enemies and just the looks. Crazy last shot coming. Nice. Uh, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, um, did you want to maybe like touch on the uh, last device mechanics real quick? Or was that, that was covered in Doom, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so instead, how about, um, here is one of the only places where the, the large Zorcher, or the shotgun equivalent, uh, is really put into use here, because most of the enemies in this game are like kind of too clumped together to really um, use this. Uh, so it's, it's either better to use the phasing Zorcher, which is like the pulse rifle, uh, or, um, you know, you might not always kill him in one shot because of the RNG. And speaking of RNG, there's this guy right here. Oh, okay, good. So there's a one in eight chance that I'll actually shoot a, a soggy rocket and not be able to kill him in one hit. Uh, seven out of eight times he'll die in, in one rocket, though, so that was, that was good. And we're already at E1M5, which is the last mission here. So in the caverns of Bazoik, that's where they we mine or extract the mineral checks, uh, which is used for the nutritional content of cereal. I don't really get the scientific process behind it, but I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> Uh, and so someone mentioned the spork. Here it is. We're not going to use it quite yet, um, but that's, a, I think, a good uh, opportunity to talk about kind of uh, some other uh, stuff that Charles Jacoby um, contributed to this game. So the, the weapons in this game obviously had to be made a little bit more kid-friendly. Uh, so um, they actually started out looking kind of like plastic guns, like toy guns, like a Buzz Lightyear kind of thing. And um, the Czechs shot that down because it looked too violent. And then so they changed it to kind of look like a remote control. Uh, and <laughs> this was this was one of the changes. So instead of a chainsaw, you have an electric spork. And it's a, it's a pretty good time to use it there. So. <laughs> Um, another thing that got shot down was um, originally they were going to be uh, using bits of fruits and vegetables to pacify uh, the phlemoids, so you'd shoot like banana slices or strawberries at them. Uh, but they, they actually had concerns uh, that that would cause kids to start food fighting, so that got shot down. We probably have time for one more donation, Butters, just before the end. Thank you very much, Sam Kablam, for the $10 donation. Thank you for playing one of my favorite PC classics from my childhood. When's the HD remake with Battle Royale mode coming out? <laughs> so as Peaches goes into the final segment here, he's going to have to open like six or seven doors and go take out all of the, they're called Armored Phlemoidus Bipedicus um, monsters. And, um, but there's going to be one in the next door who's way at the back. So we got to go, we got to go search for him. Yeah, we got to flush him out. Sometimes when these uh, Phlemoids get aggroed, you can kind of, have him walk towards you, but you always got to go and fish that guy out yourself. And that's the evil final boss, the Flembrain, um, changed from the Baron of Hell, and still has a thousand health. So if Peaches has 40 Zorch, he can come and take it out in a single shot. Okay, get ready on time. Here they are. Time. Uh <laughs> so we did it. We Zorched every Flemoid. We uncovered every secret and we rescued the citizens deep within the caverns of Bazoik. Uh, so the mission continues at ChexQuest.com, which is actually still an active website. It sends you to Chex.com, but it's still there. Uh, we still believe. 
Uh, and something that I also wanted to, to show off a little bit is that, um, so this is a Doom total conversion, so you can use some commands, for example, like map E1M1, that takes you to landing zone, right? Uh, map E1M5, you know, that's Caverns of Bazoik. Um, but normally the game stops here, but it turns out that this is just a modified Doom, so you can go to, for example, map E1M8, and... <laughs> Um, you might recognize this from two runs ago. <laughs> so it, it just loads the, the checks uh, assets into the Doom level. And uh, they, they just straight up, you know, uh, instead of instead of the, the Barons, uh, they have the Flumbrain. And the thing is, though, I think they're they're like supposed to be scripted to walk out, but I think they're a little bit too thick to get out. <laughs> I can't believe they uh, put oh, the yeah. sound for that. Yeah. <laughs> and you might remember at at the end of Doom, uh, in this level, you're supposed to walk onto kind of like a goat skull pentagram portal. Instead, you walk onto the sigil for the Intergalactic Federation of Serials, and that will send you here. And the, the Flamoids will get their revenge. <laughs> so, in an alternate universe, that might be maybe how, how the mission ends. Um, but that's it. That's Chuck's Quest. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you, GDQ, for taking a chance on this one. And uh, also, thank you for putting this into the Doom block instead of the Awful block. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and Not an awful game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just want to give shout-outs to my couch. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, shout-outs to the viewers. Um, shout-outs to Bianca, Brett, Rami, uh, any of my buddies who are watching back home. And uh, yeah, thank all of you for watching. And also thank you for donating to meet this incentive because uh, I think this is way more fun of a category than UV Speed just because it's such a short game. Uh, it was really nice to kind of like show off a little bit more of the game. So again, thank you all for watching and uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Final time 122, or final time 1022. Good job, Peaches. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dig Beta, for the $50 donation. ChexQuest won me over. I'm from Chex Squadron, and I volunteer. Thank you very much, B Weber, for the $250.